stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm Tracy Reinick, your host, and I'm joined this week by Shiraz Mian, Zach's Director of Research, but he's not here to talk about oil this time. He's going to talk about his other expertise, which is earnings, and we just entered into earnings season, so he's going to, I'm afraid... I feel be the Grinch here, the bearer of bad news about what earnings might look like. And then uh, more towards the end of the show today, I'll be giving some uh, stock picks about companies that have actually had a tremendous earnings record in terms of beats. Um, So I'll provide a couple of those because I know everybody, they want the ones that, you know, continue to beat quarter after quarter. It's not easy to do. But Shiraz... Thanks for joining us. We've sure. already had Alcoa report, so they kind of kicked things off. That's right. And I know you keep track of everything going on in the S&P 500, and I see the latest data is is not good, really. It's not. That's <laughs> right. It's actually not been good for a while, yeah. uh, but it's not getting better. And um, uh, for Q4 as a whole, you mentioned Alcoa reported. Uh, Alcoa and what's happening in the mining sector and the broader commodities and oil, uh, it's it's kind of like the the uh, the the ground zero for what's 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 bad and what's wrong with the earnings season. And um, uh, and that's 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 a big reason for why the aggregate growth picture is so weak. Uh, but that's not the only reason. Uh, so there is not growth. Uh, in fact, earnings are expected to be down uh, in Q4, down for the third quarter in a row. Uh, and um, uh, the prior two quarters, Q2 and Q3 of 2015, uh, if we had excluded energy from the S&P 500, we would have had positive earnings growth. Uh, Q4 has the distinction that even if you take energy out, it will still be negative. Um, Okay, so so we've all been blaming energy. I know I have. And I saw a stat you had that you said energy for this coming quarter, the total earnings are expected to be down 67%. That's year over year. And the revs are going to be down 37.9%. That's not surprising given the price of crude and natural gas right now. That's right. Um, But I know I've been thinking, oh, that's, you know, that's what's dragging down everything. But then I I read all of your other data about all the other sectors. And I said, no, this this looks awful even for these other sectors. That's right. It's it's uh, the the weakness is very broad based. And as uh, listeners know, we divide the S&P 500 into 16 sectors uh, versus the 10 official uh, in the uh, Standard & Poor's uh, gigs. And of our 16 sectors, 13 have negative earnings growth in Q4, including energy. Uh, So it's only three sectors that have positive growth. Uh, I think it's easier to talk about the three that have positive than the 13 that have negative. Okay. Uh, Should we we just go there at least? uh, To the positive ones? Yeah, let's give something that's good out there. (laughs) Uh, Transportation is the only one with double-digit earnings growth. Okay. Uh, 13.4% earnings growth for transportation uh, in Q4. And now, how is that possible? Because I know, well, is that all airlines? Because it's, all, it's all airlines. Okay, because I follow the railroads, and that's that's a, dis- that's that's a right. disaster over yeah. there. Yeah, we'll have uh, CSX reporting uh, after the close today, and you're totally right. The railroads uh, aren't doing good, and uh, the railroads are... Are, are partly tied to the energy, partly tied to what's happening in coal yeah. uh, and the other commodities, and then the manufacturing sector too. And some people are even talking that the consumer end of the economy, uh, which was providing um, the bulk of the support to railroads up till now, even those may be weakening. So yes, it's it's mostly airlines and then some trucking. Okay, uh, and those are enough to offset. Uh, the, uh, the the decline that's coming from um, uh, from, from 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 railroads and the other positive is finance. Okay. Um, wow, that's kind of surprising. It's, it's not much of a positive oh. when you dig a little <laughs> deeper. The total earnings growth for the sector are in the low single digits. 
Uh, and even that is solely because of easy comparisons at Citigroup. Okay. Citigroup in the Q4 of 14 had that big bath and they, That's right. uh, uh, the comparisons is about a three three and a half billion dollar swing in net income for them. When you take Citigroup out of finance, uh, they turn negative as well. Wow! Uh, and then we have a, a, a teeny tiny growth uh, in uh, in the medical sector, uh, and that's broad based and that's legit and that's for good reasons. Okay. Uh, so there's there's not much growth. Uh, anywhere. Uh, energy is a big drag, uh, but there's not much growth outside of energy either. What about the tech sector? Yeah, so for tech, total earnings are expected to be modestly down, about okay. 4%. And, uh, uh, and the, the, uh, the, the revenue picture is positive. So a little bit okay. positive revenue growth for, uh, for, for modest negative. And in there, uh, the issue is primarily in the hardware side of the business. It has, it has been a problem for some time. Yeah. So the legacy uh, tech players all have declining earnings, and that's more than offsetting the strength in some of the the uh, the faster growing and the hotter areas, uh, search and internet and e-commerce and social media and cloud. Uh, all of those are doing better. So you have strong growth from Google. You have strong growth from Facebook. Uh, uh, but the, the the legacy guys are not doing good. Semiconductors are very bad. Okay, I was just going to bring up the semis because yeah, it, semis it hasn't are, looked good for them. That's right. Semis are doing bad. Uh, uh, they have uh, pretty tough comparisons to the year earlier period. Uh, we have telecoms within tech too, unlike other data vendors on the street. Uh, we don't have a standalone sector for telecom. In telecom, there is good growth. Uh, Verizon and AT&T both have a stronger growth. Stronger looking growth uh, is, is, is a better way to put it. Uh, Verizon has legit growth. AT&T, uh, they acquired, I believe, Dish or who, who they, they did, acquired. Yeah. And I think it's the... The, uh, the combined company versus the standalone company, which is giving you this illusion of growth. Right. <laughs> uh, but even with all of those cross currents, uh, tech is down. Okay. Well, that's, that's definitely not a good um, sign right there because that's, that's, right. that's everybody's favorite sector, that's right. it seems. Okay. Um, I also saw that going back to the declining area, I know that's like kind of I depressing know, to do. That's like everything. It is. But I was surprised you have four other sectors that are going to see double digit earnings decline. That's um, right. And one of them I was surprised because aerospace is in there. Aerospace is, 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 a, is a small sector. And then within the broader S&P 500 context, um, one or two companies, uh, tough comparisons okay. could tilt uh, the sector one way or the other. So it's 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 not really as representative of the of the earnings weakness as we see elsewhere. I think uh, if you have to have runners up and other uh, contenders for the for the top slot in the in the weak group, uh, there'll be industrials and basic materials. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, Alcoa had like three, four cents after ex you exclude everything bad from their results, and that compared to like 30, 35 cents uh, in the year earlier period. And that's kind of what it is for all the mining and for all the other chemicals and for everybody else. Right. Uh, so basic materials earnings are expected to be down 30.3%. Uh, and uh, industrials earnings are expected to be down 23%. Are we expecting this to be kind of the bottom for like those really beaten down sectors? Is this like Q4 going to be, or I mean, obviously no one knows, but That's is right. this going to be the worst of the earnings contraction for these kinds of companies? Yes. The, the, the comparisons start getting better as we move into 2016. Now, the, the problem is that some of the negative momentum uh, that we had been talking about and we thought had bottomed out have kind of come back with full force. So yeah. uh, so the, the commodity price issues, the oil issue, oil 
surprisingly is down like 10, 15 percent in the new year. I know. I yeah. just saw a stat that was a little scary that said the commodities index, that's all the commodities. That's right. It was created in 1991, and it's now at the all-time low from 1991. So that includes the fertilizers and all the metals and, you know, coffee and that's all this right. other stuff. Yep. That... That seems pretty extreme. Yeah, no, so the, the the momentum that we have been seeing in 2015 and that many of us were hoping that uh, if for no other reason, just the pure arithmetic comparison uh, of the base year 15 versus the uh, comparison, in two, those would start looking better at least, and that's not happening. In fact, what's happening in the last few weeks is uh, that pretty much the entire growth that was expected in the first half of 2016 is effectively evaporating. Uh, is that that's overall, or that's just in those those overall, commodities? Overall, overall, okay. Yes. So already we're seeing that's people right. turn negative. So it's not just these uh, these commodities and economically sensitive sectors. Even others like technology and financials, those are suffering negative revisions too. There have been questions about Apple. Right. Uh, people are questioning whether the shipments and uh, all their outlook for, uh, for for the iPhones will hold or not. And uh, within the financials, which is one of the bigger chunks uh, in the S&P 500, uh, the, uh, the Fed has raised, but the uh, 10-year Treasury is not budging. No. And, uh, and the, the, uh, the, the yield curve is flattening. And uh, some of the hopes that folks had for net interest margins, uh, those expectations perhaps will need to be, uh, to, to be brought down. Yeah, let's explain a little bit on how the analysts work, you know, going into a new year, because I know you've explained it to me, and I do find it really interesting, but everybody else might not know that this is really how it is, that they're really optimistic going in, and even into a new quarter, you know, they have these great expectations, and the estimates are usually quite high, and then start start oozing down as the quarter goes on. So what's happening right now, like for first quarter of the year, obviously, we're just getting in you know, the initial reports, and then we're going to get guidance from these companies. Are they, are the analysts starting off 2016, like the first quarter, as high as they have in the years past, or are they already tempering they, expectations? They, they are bringing it down, uh, but it's still relatively high. And you're right. It's, uh, we are, we are always optimistic and uh, uh, in the analyst community in particular, if it's one or two quarters ahead uh, life is sunny and life is nice. Right. <laughs> and uh, for, for the Q4 earnings season, uh, which we mentioned uh, at the top, that total earnings for the S&P are expected to be down 7.4%. When we started the quarter back in October, uh, earnings were expected to be down 1.1%. Okay, so that shows you kind of you That's know, right. what happens. So now that we are at the start of Q1-16, uh, earnings are expected to be down 1.5% okay. in Q1. Uh, and they're barely in the positive for Q2. Now, as these companies report results for Q4 and discuss or outright provide guidance for uh, for, for the first quarter of the current period, uh, most of those estimates will be coming down. And right. my, my, my assumption is or estimate is that by the time everything is said and done about the Q4 earnings season, the uh, growth expectation for Q1 will be comparable to what we have for Q4 now, a decline of 6 7%. And if the uh, negative momentum in in, in oil and the other commodities continues, perhaps even more. Yeah. Um, Was everyone wrong that low oil prices would actually help the global economy? Are, Are people rethinking that now, like when they're looking at these earning reports? Obviously... You know, these are the big multinationals, and there's also currency issues at play, too. That's right. But, you know, are, are, are we getting the story wrong, that this is, should help it? It hasn't really played out as everybody thought it would uh, at the beginning of 15 or around the middle of the time. Everybody thought we'll start seeing this data in consumer spending and con- uh, in other uh, retail sales type of data. Uh, it hasn't really shown to the same extent. There is a counter argument that the spending and the retail sales picture would have been a lot worse had we not had these energy savings. So it's it's difficult to tell as to who is right, who is wrong. But one thing is clear that 
within the context of the U.S. economy, which is net short energy, it consumes more than it produces, uh, uh, if we did not have the energy saving, uh, the, the, the momentum and the robustness and the strength in the consumer economy will not have been to the extent that we saw now. Now, labor yeah. market is improving. That's right. giving a boost to consumer spending as well. Uh, but the real consumer spending is around 3% on an annualized quarterly basis over the last many quarters. And uh, some people think that uh, it is getting uh, a decent amount of help from uh, the savings in energy. Right. I know. If you're, you're not putting it in your car, you want to go eat at the restaurant. That's right. Yeah. And, and we have, like, even on the, uh, uh, we have these problems with the uh, traditional brick and mortar retailers and, and, and things like that. But the online guys are doing yeah. pretty good. Numbers have been good for That's them. right. And uh, other um, operators that are consumer facing, uh, those are pretty good. You mentioned the restaurants, they're across the board uh, yeah. doing yeah. Uh, doing pretty good. So. Now, what are we expecting out of this earnings season to find out about China? I know I always look at a couple of the big companies that, you know, like Yum Brands that does a lot of business over there. Um, People look at Nike, but that report was really good and they saw good Chinese sales. So does it reflect anything or are U.S. companies not big enough in the Chinese market to see if there was a recession or a slowdown? I know Starbucks just announced they're going to open up another 500 stores over there so they're not bearish that's right um can we tell anything from or are we just going to wait and see what the companies themselves say like if they come out and say obviously china's real slow like we're getting hammered they're like caterpillar has done obviously some of those but on the consumer side in china we haven't really heard it that's right i think that is the the uh the, the the differentiation that we as as analysts and investors need to start making about china uh, we have this tendency of looking at China in a binary kind of a framework. Uh, it's either all smoke and mirrors or it's all just bullish and extremely good. Uh, there perhaps is some truth to the, the narrative that the country's leadership is shifting the economy's direction from more investment and consumer and trade to uh, uh, investment and trade and manufacturing to consumers. Right. And uh, you mentioned Nike, and you mentioned Starbucks, and Apple is a big operator. Yeah, that's and right. It's 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 uh, it's it's on a company by company basis. It's a function of how differentiated its product and its its brand is, as it is in the U.S. market. Right. Um, uh, but overall, the, the, the retail sales, the consumer spending, and the service side of the Chinese economy seems to be holding a lot better uh, than is the case on the investment, real estate, manufacturing, trade, uh, those kinds of things. And I think uh, that trend could continue in parallel uh, for that economy. It's definitely happening in the U.S. economy. I know. I was just thinking that we as have, you're talking. I'm like, right. wait, it sounds just like the U.S. economy. That's right. We have, uh, we, we mentioned railroads at the top and the railroads are suffering because the, uh, the, the energy and manufacturing and the industrial sector is suffering and the industrial sector effectively is in a recession. Right. That's uh, what everybody's been saying. That's right. We have housing and recovery. We have consumers doing okay. Uh, and uh, that's kind of like the big picture theme for the U.S. Perhaps we have to create some sort of a sophisticated narrative like that about China, too. Yeah. If only we could start having more confidence in their data. Right. I mean, I think that's part of the problem. Nobody knows anything that's, that's really right. going on there. I was reading this one research report, I believe, from Bank of America, who uh, who went on the ground to China, and they were trying to do the, the smartphone uh, the switching and all the thing uh, with with an eye on Apple, and they were saying through their survey that uh, a big chunk of the sample, uh, uh, they were saying that when I decide to switch, I'm going to switch to uh, one of Apple's products, and uh, uh, and Huawei was a second, and Samsung was 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 a third one. Uh, so Apple has uh, a lot of it riding on the on the strength of the Chin- Chinese economy and the uh, and the Chinese consumer. Starbucks has Hershey's not yeah. doing good. Yum is not doing good. Right. Um, um, and and the outlook for the automotive market is kind of weakening. But they sold twenty one million cars last year. I know. 
they're not really complaining. That's right. Not yet. Yeah, so, so, we'll so it's have to see, I yeah, guess. we'll have to see. Yeah, it's it's the individual company's product, their service, their brand, uh, and how it resonates with the uh, with the middle upper income, uh, and which kind of demographic in the Chinese market they are targeting. Right. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit and get to those hot stocks. I guess that's right. They're not necessarily hot in their share price, or uh, you know, you got to go look at the charts. But these five stocks have not missed in five years, Um, so no misses. That doesn't mean, again, that, you know, the guidance has been great every single time or anything, but I know you're going to recognize most of these names. So I'm going to lead off with General Electric. They haven't missed in five years. There's Zax3 right now. And then if you're interested in kind of what's going on in employment right now, Manpower, um, that ticker is M-A-N. They're number three, and they have a lot of business in France, actually. At least like a quarter of their business is in France, and they're also big in the rest of Europe. So they're not just the U.S. employment market, but things have been improving in Europe. So they've seen some improving numbers over there. And then on the healthcare side, which, you know, you you were just mentioning, Shiraz, is expected to be one of the better um, areas this for fourth quarter. You have United Health Group. Um, UNH, they're a number one and they haven't missed in five years. And on the retail, the consumer side, um, a big name everybody knows and loves and is at near all time high still is Home Depot. They have the perfect record as well for five years. They're a number two. And then also on the consumer side, on the retail side is uh, Limited Brands. Their ticker is LB. They're actually number three, but they just reported a very strong uh, December holiday season, and they have both Victoria's Secrets and that pink line, and the pink is so hot with the teenagers right now. Um, I think that's where they're seeing those really strong comps. So as you you were saying, Shiraz, everybody you know is worried about various things, but the consumer, but not everything's bad in the consumer. And they have brick and mortar stores. They have online too, but limited brands is able because of their, just their strong brands right now That's right. um, to be uh, one of the outperformers. So that's just five picks you could go look at. It's kind of rare to have companies that beat for five years in a row. Like uh, people think that might be easy because they can manage the earnings you know, expectations, but it's hard to manage for five years. It is. And right. under all these like economic conditions Absolutely. and various holiday seasons and just whatever else is going on or bad things going on in Europe sure. with manpower. So I respect, I think it takes a lot sure. to be beating every year like that. So. I'm very surprised by uh, you, you, you bringing in manpower. Yeah. Uh, I had manpower in one of the top 10 portfolios a number of years back, and I was surprised. Uh, how much European leverage they had. Yeah. Uh, and, and and there was a time when we had all of the European problems and currency issues and everything. And uh, it's a Milwaukee-based company. I know. Uh, but it's, uh, it's 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 pretty big. In, uh, and all these others are, are, are blue chips. Yeah. Uh, G has been dragged down by the energy thing it a has. little bit. Yeah. Uh, but their uh, uh, aviation division is doing pretty good. Yeah. Uh, they've got rid of finance, so they've become right. a pure player industrial now. Yeah. Uh, and HD is, uh, Home Depot is a very well-run company. Yeah. yeah. And they've just, they've been killing it as the That's housing right. has recovered That's and right. people want to put in new kitchens again. Yep. And Absolutely. Again, the consumer it wants to spend money and is spending in some of these select areas. So. Absolutely. So Absolutely. these are just some good ideas to look at. Uh, but I think we're going to wrap it up for this week. And, um, but If they want to learn more about what's happening with earnings, I really recommend, um, you know, that they check out your weekly article that's on Zax.com. It's Zax Earnings Trends, and it's under your name, of course. And uh, you can get updates on what's happening with all the companies reporting in the S&P 500 and how the actual earnings that are coming in are changing um, every week from Shiraz there. And you can just check out whatever other articles because we will have others on the earnings reports and everything else going on with earnings on Zax.com. And don't forget, you can also subscribe to the Zax Market Edge podcast on SoundCloud.com and also on iTunes. So you can just, you can find us everywhere these days, but earnings is our big time. And, uh, you know, always excited when we get earnings season, even with this kind of bad data, but, you know, we'll be covering some more on earnings here on the podcast and on the website until next week.